Hassan's Mass Channel. Now, here we have a question, which is um, a trig equation, and it involves angles, okay, or the sign of angles of different, um, different angles, basically. So sine x, sine 5x, sine 3x, they're not the same angle, right? So when you have this kind of situation, um, then we have to try to deal with it in a um, particular way. So, for example, I mean, if they were the same angle, right, we could combine these together somehow. Even if there were sines and cosines, we could try to combine them together using some of the techniques that we've learned. Um, but when you have this type of situation where you've got the sine or the cosine of angles which are not the same, and you don't, for example, have angles which are double angles, right? So like sine x and sine 2x and stuff like that, where you could try to write this as 2 sine x, cosine x, and then continue. Then we've got to use um, some other techniques. And one of those techniques is by using what are called the factor formulae. Now, the factor formulae, you'll find them in the formula book for P3. Um, I think it will be for P3. Okay, so you'll find them like this. this. These are called the factor formulae. Sine A plus sine B equals sine A minus sine B equals and so on. So you have the sine of an angle plus the sine of another angle can be expressed as a product of the sines of two angles, which might help us here to form, uh, to be able to use factorizing. So if I'm going to use this first form here, okay, this first form here, but to make life easier for myself, because I have to subtract these two angles, see what it's saying, what it's saying here is like sine A plus sine B is equal to two times the sine of the sum of those angles divided by two, multiplied by the cosine of the, of the, cosine of the difference of those angles divided by two. In which case I'm gonna get cos, a negative cosine, which actually is not a big deal, because I know that the cosine, for example, of minus A, is equal to the cosine of positive a because the cosine curve is symmetrical about the y-axis, right? So there's no problem there, but just to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as the sine of 5x plus the sine of x equals the sine of 3x. Just write it that way first, then it just you don't have to worry about that problem. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this so I've got the sine of an angle plus the sine of a different angle, and I'm going to rewrite it in this form. So I'll have 2 times the sine of the sum of those angles, so 5x plus x divided by 2, multiplied by the cosine of the difference of those two angles, which is 5x minus x divided by 2, and that's equal to the sine of 3x. So now this is going to give me 2 times... Now, this is 6x over 2, which is 3x. So that's 2 times the sine of 3x multiplied by the cosine of, this is going to be 4x divided by 2, which is 2x, and that's equal to the sine of 3x. Now, I see I have these two, which are exactly the same on both sides of the equation. I have sine of 3, whoops, wrong pen. I have the sine of 3x here and the sine of 3x here. They are like terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them back together on the same side of the equation and then use factorizing. So I'll have 2 sine of 3x times the cosine of 2x minus the sine of 3x equals 0. So now I can use a zero product property. I can take out sine of 3x as a common factor. And then I can have 2 times cosine of 2x minus 1 equals 0. What I can't do is I can't divide by sine 3x because then I'll lose a whole heap of solutions that we're going to get from sine 3x. So if I divide by sine 3x, I'm going to lose all the solutions that this will give me. Now I have two um, factors multiplied together, two products that give you zero. The product of two factors gives you zero. So one of those factors must be zero. So either sine 3x is zero, and if that's the case, we can solve that. Or we can say 2 cosine 2x minus 1 is zero, in which case... Cosine of 2x is equal to a half. So we need to solve these two equations, but we have our limits between 0 and 180 for x. So our limits are for x between 0 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, and are they included? Yes, they are. They're both included. They've got the equal sign for both of them. 
you got to take care sometimes when it's not included. You, you can have a problem by including answers that you're not supposed to include. Now, let's solve for sine 3x equals 0 first. So I know I need to change the limit so I catch all my angles. So I'm going to change this to 3x in the middle. So this will become, stay as 0, and this will become 180 times 3, which is 540. So I've got to catch all the angles between 0 and 540 for this one. And for the other one here, I'm going to change this so it's, it says 2x. So I need to catch all the angles up to 360 for this one, 180 times 2. All right, so for this one here, we find the first angle. We have 3x equals inverse sine of 3x is 0. And then the other angle for sine is 180 minus the angle. So it's 180 minus 0, which is 180. And then they repeat every 360 degrees. So 0 plus 360 is going to give me 360. And 180 plus 360 is going to give me 540. Now, if I go further than that, I'm going to be outside of my range. Just let's make me, let me make sure of that. So we see inverse sine of 0, as we know, is 0. Then we do 180 minus that. Of course, that's going to give you 180. Then 0 plus 360 is 360, and 180 plus 360 is 540. Okay, and that's as far as we go. So that's for 3x. Now, remember, we have to find what x is. So we've got to divide all of them by 3. So 0 divided by 3 is 0. So 0 degrees, 180 divided by 3 is 60. 60 degrees, 360 divided by 3 is 120. 120 degrees and 540 divided by 3 is 180. Okay, just to make sure of that. 540 divided by 3 gives you 180. So those are all the solutions from this branch. But we also have this branch. So we know that if cosine 2x equals a half, then 2x is equal to 60 degrees. Inverse cosine of a half is 60 degrees. And we know for cosine, the other angle is 360 minus this angle. So it's going to be 300 degrees. And then it repeats every 360. Okay, now if I add 360 to this, I'm going to be outside of my range. If I add 360 to this, I'm going to be outside of my range. These are the only two angles within our range because this range is from 0 to 360 because we have to multiply it's for 2x, not for 3x. Now I've got to divide both of those angles by 2. I've got 30 degrees and I've got 150 degrees. So therefore, my complete solutions are x equals, let me write them in order, 0, and then 30, then 60, then 120, then 150, and then 180. All of those answers are my answers. Just take care of one thing. If the limit did not include um, 0 and 180, then it, wouldn't include, it would not include 0 and, and 540. So, for example, if there was no equal sign here, you would exclude the 0. Exclude the 0. If there was no equal sign here, you would exclude the 540. You would exclude these angles at the end if those equal signs weren't there because they're right on the limits. So you've got to be careful. Sometimes they do trick you. But anyway, that's the answer to this question. Question number two. We solve these type of questions when you have involving sines and cosines of angles which are not the same or not double angles. You use the factor formulae. You'll find this in the formula book. Okay, so that's um, how we deal with such questions. And when you have this type of issue, uh, I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular um, chapter of um, chapter four from P3. Test your understanding questions. If I answer any others, students ask me, I will put them in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from chapter four, um, which is, um, you know, trig, the trig addition formula in general, that's going to be in the playlist over here. So trig identities and equations from P3 in this playlist over there. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.